this part we're going to be looking at the materials that I use when I customise action figures. Making Dormammu, I may use all of them, or a couple of them, or most of them. We don't quite know yet, but let's go... Well, where will we start? Um, let's start with the general area itself. I have a... I just have a, a desk. This one's from Ikea. It's just a table. I cover it with this. and It's um, plastic that you use when you're doing decorating around your house. Uh, you cover your sofa or whatever in it. I put it over the table and taped it down. Um, it just, you know, helps protect the desk over time. I mean, I don't use the desk for anything else but this, but it's always nice to be able to clean up your area once in a while completely. I've also got this cutting mat, which is what I do all of my work on. Um, never, well, don't never, don't say never, because it's art and you can do whatever you want, but... Um, I would always try and have a desk that you work at with a surface you're not afraid to damage that is resistant to heat and impact and cutting and your own blood and sweat and tears. So that's why I have the cutting mat there. Uh, light. I have this um, standing light and it's got a, a white light in it. Not... Um, like the yellow light that you normally get for light bulbs. I've bought, this is an LED um, light, so it's pure white, so I have a good idea of what the colors are gonna look like in daylight, which is important. Yellow light can alter the shades of colors. Um, and light is really important here in Scotland where it is eternally overcast. So I've got a light from that angle, and I've got a light from this angle. This is, oh geez. Uh, this is one of these things that, you know, the, they sell in hobby shops. I got it for my Christmas. It's quite good. It's got a magnifying glass down there. Which I can't say I ever use. It's more useful as a light than anything else. Two light sources so you're not, you know, you can eliminate shadows when you're working. Oh. The most expensive item, single item, that I use is my Dremel stylus. Um, I really recommend these. You'll get a lot of rotary tools and these are used um, essentially it's just a a thing that spins like that and it has variable speed settings at the end. It's difficult to do one handed but there we are. Um, this has a nice grip uh, and you'll be able to get cheaper rotary tools certainly that will do much the same job but they will wear out very very quickly. Um, Dremel is a really reliable brand and that's a really good model, the Dremel stylus. It has a base that it charges once it's in. You can also get corded ones so you don't have to charge them. There are times when you just run out of charge and you just want to get customising but you have to wait on it to charge. That's a downside but the upside is it gives you the freedom to move without that cable in the way. Um, they get different ends. This is a cutting end for going through um, plastic and whatever. I've got lots of other ones for sanding down. Dremels are very good for very, I would say almost brutal jobs where you really have to get in and get rid of the plastic, but for more intricate work you'll need to get your sandpaper out and um, smooth things down. But you can do a lot with a Dremel and really if you're serious about customising you have to get one. That's all there is to it. Moving on, oh, I can't forget, um, safety goggles. Now I can't, I, this is something I always forget. I do, you know, it's not that I, I think you shouldn't wear them or it's a waste of time. I always forget to put them on and then I end up getting flying bits of hot plastic coming off and flying into my eyes when I use the Dremel. So please do use your safety goggles. Feel stupid and whatever, but um, you don't want to go blind really, do you? So, what we move on to next? Um, the sculpting. This is the material I use. This is Milliput, super fine white. Tells you how to use it. This is a, a British product, made in Wales, made in the UK. Um, so this is very easy for me to get. If you live overseas, there may be another brand that's um, more easily obtainable than this. I find this very reliable. I've never used anything else, so this is what I've, you know, I've adapted my, um, 
my customising to suit the suit the materials. Um, and it's actually very good. This is a super fine white. You can get a lot of other kinds of epoxy. Now, an epoxy putty, for those who don't know, it's a, it's like clay, but with clay, you know, you have to wait for it to dry and then you have to put it in a kiln and fire it and then it becomes hard or you can get um, some other, you know, air drying clays that become hard without the, the kiln part. Um, so it comes in two parts and essentially epoxy putties, they're just a type of clay that you mix equal amounts of this part and this part together and a chemical reaction happens when the two substances meet and they harden over time. It takes about, oh, well it really depends on temperature actually. So it can take two hours, it can take four hours, but generally, you know, within six hours it's rock hard and it's basically much like a, a ceramic or stone when it's hardened. Um, so that's what I use, and um, so yeah, there's there's other brands available, Aves Epoxy or Avis. I don't know how to say it. Um, all these kind of things. Uh, please don't ask me where to get it. Do a do a search online. Um, you'll find you'll find out where to get it. You can order it off eBay if you want. Um, you know, I don't know where you live, I don't know what shops around you where you can buy it. I buy mine from Hobbycraft or from online, but if you don't live in my house, that might not be convenient for you. Uh, to shape the, the putty, I use these things, cuticle sticks from uh, Superdrug, it's just a drugstore. And they have a, let's see if I've got one, one free for you. Here we go. So this is a cuticle stick. So it's just a wooden stick, and it has this kind of sloped end. This is really good for sculpting. When you sculpt, you want to keep your fingers away from it. That's when you're putting in the detail. Your fingers, you know, are good for general shaping, but when it comes, they leave fingerprints. And this sort of shape is great for sculpting. You can get um, sort of rubber. Uh, that I think they're for oil painting actually, the kind of um, rubber, they look like a brush then, there's rubber and shaped kind of like this or in different shapes. And those are also good and very reusable, but um, they're quite an outlay at the start. So I just use these, you get whatever, you get 10 for like a pound and that, that suits me. Um, toothpicks, you know, they're always useful as well. They're much, a lot, much the, the same use as these. Um, but yeah, they always come in useful for sculpting and just little things. Flossers. Now, this might be useful for Dormammu. He's got that, you know, that black frame cage thing around his head, which is pointed. You know, these, not so much interested in this end. These, uh, this end is, come on, focus. There we go. Um, this end is very useful for creating spikes. And it's also, you can also bend it a little. So it's good for creating a, like a bended shape. And that's probably what we're going to be using for the frame around Dormammu's head. I also have here a mug. Now, this is a really old, gross mug, as you can see. Uh, when I sculpt, because it can take, you know, like I said, up to six hours for it to be really firm and fully cured. I will boil some water, pour it in here and put the sculpted stuff in here and hold it for maybe five minutes and by, you know, like I said, the heat makes a difference and the heat of the boiled water, not boiling, you know, don't be using that hot water on it, your figure will warp. Um, the boiled water and the heat from it will just uh, cure it within 5-10 minutes and that's going to be really useful for something like Dormer Move where we're going to be sculpting some flames and then coming back later. And what have we got next? Next up we have a glue gun. Glue guns are really useful for when you need to attach surfaces that may not be, that may not 
match exactly. Um, super glue is where have we got super glue? Super glue is very good for attaching two surfaces that are completely flat to each other. But uh, if there's any unevenness, super glue has a problem. That's where hot glue can come in. It can create, you know, a sort of, I would say, a temporary bond. Um, that you can then sculpt over or, you know, make a better attachment. So hot glue is really good and extra hot glue sticks. Super glue will be your amazing friend. Be prepared to glue your fingers together. A craft knife. Really, really important and it's also really important that you take care with it. These things are horrendously sharp and I don't think you can really see down there at the, the join of my my finger to my hand. That's an injury that Dr. Doom did to me back when I was but a teenager and I learned the danger of um, craft knives first hand. And extra blades. I just used this really cheap basic craft knife. Um, it was only about three pounds. It's done me well. Paint. I use Games Workshop paint. People will discuss over and over what's the best paint to use. The answer is the best paint to use is the paint that you have the best success with. Different people use different approaches, live in different climates, paint reacts differently to those different approaches and climates. So just go with what works with you. I find that Games Workshop paints work for me. Um, they're also called Citadel. I'm never quite sure of the, the what the divide between Games Workshop and Citadel is. But um, anyway, they're one and the same as far as I'm concerned. Um, you'll, they do have a habit of, I don't know if it's annually or every other year, they change the names of their paints, which, you know, one year you could be using Blood Red, the next year you're using, I don't know, Orcs Tampon Red or something like that. I have no idea. They keep changing it. Um, you'll see they keep changing the, the way the bottles um, look as well. These ones are really old with the black caps and then they change to ones with white caps and then they change to clear ones. Ah. Anyway, it's all, it's all good paint inside and according to the guy in the shop, they've recently really improved them. Whenever you go into Games Workshop, the staff have a habit of asking you what you are painting. This is just one of my pet peeves. It's frankly none of their business. <laughs> it's just, it's certainly not the little miniatures. I'm not gonna go and get in, you know, into their Warhammer thing that they keep inviting me to. I often go in, you know, go to buy like one pot of paint and say, oh, what are you painting? I'm like, oh, a, a custom action figure. And they're like, oh, end of conversation. You know, just don't bother asking me. I just want your paint. <laughs> pet peeve that I'm ranting about. Okay, so there are a few different types. I'll, I'll just update you on what the current situation with the, the, um, the paints are. So basically, I only use two types of paint. I'm not saying two colours. I use base and I use colour. Now these are the, the different types of paint. The base is it will cover almost any surface and you you tend to have a problem for example if I was to paint normal white paint on top of black it wouldn't cover it you would see the black through it you'd have to do more layers of white the base paint is very good at covering so like they say it's good for a base color um, Citadel and Games Workshop they used to do these uh, it was basically the same thing called foundation. They've they've recently improved them to be the base series, and the the problem with them is that they come in very dingy colours. You won't find any bright colours in the the sort of uh, foundation or base series. For example, that's not an example at all. Sorry, this this is their yellow. See, you can just see the difference between the foundation yellow and the colour yellow. So they come in very dingy colours, they're good for a base so that the other paints will cling on to them, but really you shouldn't be using them as the, the final coat on any of your customs. So mainly we'll be using the colour series, 
Um, these are very good. They come in so many colours, you know, various tones. That's golden yellow and that's sunburst yellow. Um, yeah, they just, they're just very good. And I have, I think I have a lot of success with them. So that's the paints I use. Of course, to use paints, we need paint brushes. I've got a lot of paint brushes that I've collected over the years of varying uses. Um, I do try and keep them nice, but it's not always successful. You forget to wash them or, you know, keep them well. In general, I, you know, I would paint very roughly with a very cheap paintbrush that you just get in a pack of five or whatever. Um, and then if I'm dry brushing, uh, which, you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we'll explain it in the paint time. We use a broad brush. And maybe, you know, each brush is going to cost you about two, three pounds each. For a bigger one, it might be larger. Sorry, larger, more expensive. These are Games Workshop um, Citadel brushes as well. You know, sometimes you can go around art stores and there's thousands of brushes and you, you know, it, you just have to take your pick. If you just go into Games Workshop, you know, and pick four of their brushes, a small one, a medium one, a big one, and then a, a sort of small dry brush one like I've got here for dry brushing, um, sorry, that's not very good, for dry brushing, um, sort of smaller areas, come on, there we go, then yeah, it'll get it out of the way, you know, you only need about four or five brushes, really, I've got quite a large collection like I say. You'll need some cloths, they're good because you're going to spill stuff, you're going to make a mess, you're going to have to wipe off your brushes, just get these cheap cleaning cloths from the supermarket. You'll need water, here I've got a, a tin of Patek's Butter Chicken, and it's just got water in it. I will say that you should always try and have clean water, of course in practice that never really happens and my water will often last multiple customs. Um, you, you'll notice that eventually when you go to try and paint something yellow and it just comes out black, you're like, yeah, I should maybe clean the water. And I think that's about all of the essential materials that I think I'm going to be needing here. I do have headphones here. This represents something that I, we're not going to be using to actually customise, but I think it's a very important part of the process that while it's a lot of fun to customise, it's easy to get distracted, so bring your own entertainment that's going to keep you going throughout the customising process. And um, yeah, have a movie on, have some music on, watch YouTube channels. And um, yeah, just be prepared to you know, keep yourself entertained so you can sit there for a long time. It's a long process, so just yeah, the less distractions the better. So that's where we are. Oh, final thing, just bring old ratty clothes that you are not going to be sorry that you get dirty. Um, there will be times when you'll be painting and, you know, I don't know, your your brushes are on the, f your, your cloths are on the floor and you just need to, oh God, just need to wipe it off. That's fine. You'll be sculpting, you'll have like the, the sculpt on your hands, you just need to wipe them off. Just go wipe them off trousers. Everything will be fine. So I think that is everything now. So basically we're ready to get started on the custom. Let's go.